I want you to go to Psalms chapter 34, verses 12 and 13. I'm reading from the King James Version. It reads, What man is he that desireth life, and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking God. Let's go to the New Testament now. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Now I'm going back to the Old Testament again. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. So it's chapter 18, verse 21, and it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, not in the tongue itself. It doesn't even say that the power are in the words. It's in the power behind the words that you speak. And where does the power come from? From your intentions. So the power, so the impact that causes life and death comes from your intention that begins in the mind. And words are the vehicle that put things in motion. It's good to understand this. And there's one more um, scripture I want you to read. Hold on. It's from the Old Testament. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. It's very clear. There is power in the intention of the words you use. You can use very soft words, but if your intention is evil, that intention will overrule the fact that you're using sweet words or words that are considered sweet by society. You can use very direct words or words that are considered harsh, but if your intention is good and constructive, that good and constructive intention will manifest itself despite people not agreeing with your choice of words. So, you can have a deceiver using accepted speech, they use formal language, or they use, or they're very polite or whatever, at the same time they're causing destruction and occur to you. And then you can have people who may not be that pleasant to listen to, but what they say bring forth, forth life. So, we, are used to look at the form of speech to decide whether we want to listen to it or not. Of course, if someone wants to present information, they should do it in a constructive way that you will understand it. So they should use words that are too difficult or maybe it's best not to repeat certain words too often. So of course, the form matters, but we are so attached to certain formats of speech that we only want to listen to a certain type of speech because that validates the restriction we submitted onto. So as a believer, you need to learn, or best, you need to unlearn the toxic restriction of society that implies learning to look beyond the form of speech you're, you're hearing. Because speech is not only words and sound, it can also be an expression. That's why freedom of speech does only refer to what comes out of your mouth also refers to how you express yourself artistically or how you express yourself visually. So speech itself is a broad term. It doesn't only relate to speaking, to the visual sound, but also to other types of expressing yourself to transfer your intentions. So speaking gal or deceitful speech, what is it? Deceitful speech is when someone has an expectation that's not Christ-centered, but they are convinced that this expectation of theirs is absolutely good and no fault can be found with it. So the deceitful speech, or in old English, speaking gal, comes down to the following. When you are convinced that your expectation, how you want something, is 100% good, without any possible improvement, that is deceitful speech. Even if your expectations are 100% good, the way you implement them, you, you can, you're a human being, you can get feedback on it. But the moment you are convinced 
that your way is the way, the moment you do this, you are delusional. And from this delusion, you cannot be constructive in any shape or form. And deceitful speech is also something that groups do. So, let me give an example of deceitful speech here. Someone tells you that they don't use cuss words because they have manners. What are they saying? They have been conditioned by society. And they're loyal to how they've been conditioned. And they want the praise or the validation of society for the, for the restrictions they submit onto. And now you don't care at all about those restrictions of society because you can see through them and notice that they don't add up. They tolerate domestic violence, violence against children, and all types of evil to happen, but when you use words that are considered forbidden according to some historical um, explanation, now like you're a bad guy uh, because you use you foul language, you can't be rel relied on, they don't want to listen to you, but they will listen to some preacher that's lying to them every Sunday and will listen to some lying politician of, of whom they know he's lying, but he's using soft words. So you're more interested of you're more interested in having your ego. Um, let us say, you're more interested in having your ego gratified than to see what's really true. So someone that sees through this may think, I don't care about those language uh, restrictions. And now you feel upset because they refuse to get along with your idolatry of society. Of course, it's idolatry. So when someone expresses their idolatry in a confident way, that is deceitful speech. Whether it's uh, their aversion to swear words or whether it is their aversion to certain ethnic groups, whenever someone is confident in their idolatry, that's deceitful speech. Because that speech will hinder people from doing God's will. That is civil speech, in short. So for you to overcome evil, because we will suffer persecution during this lifetime, for you to overcome evil, you need to be out of idolatry. As long as you're in idolatry, you'll be in deceitful speech. Even when you're factual, it's still deceitful. Why? Because your intention is self-gratification. Your intention is to be relieved. Because you don't exist to seek relief, you exist to glorify the Heavenly Father. So when you persist on a mission that goes against your design, that is deceitful. So when you, when you spread this message, you are deceiving people. Whether you intend to or not, that is what happens. So look beyond the form of someone's speech. Look beyond it. Look at the context. Is what they're saying leading people to Christ? Or is what they're saying going to upset people because people only want to hear what they want to hear? Let me explain. If someone is saying something as, well, you shouldn't celebrate Christmas because it's pagan. Okay, it may be true. Okay, but do they offer a solution? No, just mention a fact. And people will be upset hearing that fact because people just won't celebrate the Christmas or do what they want to do. And then there are people that will attribute you, yes, indeed, it is pagan. Okay, but where someone acknowledges or realizes that Christmas is pagan or not, doesn't matter. Are they aligning themselves with Christ? Oh, wait, that's not even mentioned. It's only, there's, only, there's only a fact mentioned that something is pagan. That a lot of people consider Christian. Okay, but where's the solution? Where's the constructive attitude in this? There is none. So what happens is, a fact is mentioned that triggers a response, that triggers reactions, but the fact that this fact is mentioned doesn't mean that it's a good thing. Even if the fact is real and true, if mentioning the fact does not lead people to Christ, it's better not to even mention it. You know why? Because human beings have the tendency to be distracted easily. So if you mention that Christmas is pagan, you will get a lot of discussions, even a lot of debates. But it would be better for you to just walk by faith 
not adhering to pagan holidays. And then people see, huh? This believer doesn't celebrate those Christian holidays, but he's prosperous. Then people come to think, okay, but why are those other people that claim to follow Christ? Why are they celebrating those pagan holidays and they're stuck and this believer is prospering and he doesn't even bother with those pagan holidays? Now, people cannot come with debates, nor discussions, nor excuses. But if you don't walk the walk, which only mention facts, people can debate it. And those debates will hinder you from doing God's will. So just because some speech is filled with facts, and just because a speech mentions Christ, or it mentions Bible verses, does not mean it is correct speech. There's a lot of deceitful speech going on out there, including Bible verses, including the name of Christ, and including many people saying amen to it. So always ask yourself, is this speech contributing to people adhering to Christ? If that does, then it means that it's beneficial for the human species in general and it's beneficial to everyone. If someone's a reprobate and they don't want to participate in solutions and they're a reprobate, that's not on you. But if a speech is blessed, then it will benefit everyone that's realistic enough to take the benefits. If a speech is deceitful, it may appear to benefit you, but over time, it will trap you in a far worse situation than you ever wanted to be in. How many people out there often said what they thought and later they realized they shouldn't have said that? For example, they're upset and they blame someone else and others say, I don't like it, I can't stand you. I don't like to see you around. I hope I never see you again. Or they just say, or they just don't say, but actually begin to avoid people. They act in a way to let other people know I can't stand you. And later they realize, okay, what was that about? Oh, I just didn't want to face something internally. And now they feel quite dumb for what they've done. And now they need to face the other individual. Now they need to face themselves. What's going on? They thought by just by openly expressing what's on their mind or what's in their feelings, they would be honest. That's not honesty. Just, just being transparent because you don't want to deal with anything. It's just dumping. And a lot of people, they just dump what's in their mind, in their emotions, especially when they are in emotional distress and they don't want to deal with it. They just dump it and they call that honesty. And they're using the word honesty or honest just to blackmail you in not demanding them to comply with justice. Because if someone would come and just rage against you, you would think, calm down, what's wrong with you? But if you say, I'm just being honest, they use that word honest to let you think that at least they're not uh, uh, lying to you. They are lying to you because they want you to accept their violence without holding them accountable. So this whole idea that if you, if you just openly reveal what's on your mind or in your emotions that then you're honest, that's a deception. That's a deceitful speech. You just want to dump and you don't care what's going on as long as you are relieved, it's okay. So calling someone that dumps all the time an honest individual is deceptive because they're not. They're just a toxic relief seeker that's on their way to reprobation. That's all they are. Any speech that does not contribute to people walking by faith and overcoming the wiles of the enemy is deceitful speech because it's rooted in idolatry. That's why there are some people it's best you, for you not even to be in a conversation with them, unless it's necessary. Why? Because those people are rooted and determined in idolatry. So how are you going to have peaceful conversations and peaceful interactions with someone that's, the, that's, that's devoted and dedicated to idolatry? You can't. So, always check the context. Be at peace.